All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome to Dick's 4x4 Garage. Today, we're working on something here. So, I wanted to get a little bit kind of into the process here before I brought you in, kind of show you what I'm working with. That way, you have more of a visual idea of what I got going on here. So, this is going to be a little camper that I'm going to put in the back of the K20, right? It might seem kind of silly. However, damn near bigger than some of those little teardrop trailers. You know what I'm saying? So basically it's 90 inches by 48 and it's going to give me plenty of room to lay down, spread out and pretty much go to sleep. Basically the design is, is it slopes down here a little bit and then it slopes down on the front. So I just kind of got done with this front area and um, it may seem a little overdone, but I used two by threes. I was inspired by a build I seen on YouTube. I'll link that in the description below so you can check his out a little different than mine same but different i originally started out with 12 two by threes and then the um 3 8 sheet plywood that i'm going to use for the siding however i uh i didn't really think i was going to need that many two by threes but i ended up needing more it's kind of a little unorthodox so like in order for it to to really work for me, I got to make it look good. So when it's all done, it's going to have a window on each side. It's going to have a vent up top and it's going to have uh, a decent door in the back, whether that be homemade or uh, some kind of like RV compartment doors. I don't know, something like that. All right, guys, a little more work this afternoon. Got this window up in here. So uh, just did some measuring and uh, did a little cardboard template for the uh, radius. And uh, just hit it with the jigsaw. The jigsaw works like this 3 8 plywood, just cuts it like nothing, so it's pretty awesome. Um, so here it is on the inside. I framed it out. A big giant door that folds up like this. So kind of teardrop style in a way because it'll fold up and then it'll be able to give me shade. I'm hoping that whatever bedding I use, I'll be able to like fold it and push it up to the front. Maybe, you know, when I build that shelf, it can fit up underneath the shelf. And, uh, but the cool thing is I'll be able to, like, fit his little Jeep right here. I'll be able to fit his little Jeep in here, my coolers and whatever. And when I get there, I'll just, you know, take it out. And then I have all my, all my area here. So All right, guys, we're back on this sucker tonight. So what I wanted to do is get my rear window done. So in this fold-up hatch, so you can kind of see it in all its glory right now. I just got it propped up here. Uh, it was important to me, like I said, so once, if this is in going to be in the bed of the truck, when this is open, I should be able to walk up underneath this uh, and have some, some good amount of shade. So what I did is I went with this entry door window. Super cheap, but... um. Anyways, like a regular window would, I think would just be too heavy for this because uh, those other RV style windows, they're pretty heavy and this one's pretty light. It's just uh, two plastic frames and a piece of glass in the middle. Um, so the this one was a little bit trickier. Well, trickier for me, I guess, but um, I had to end up ripping down a two by three with the, the saw of death down there. But uh, made it happen, so hell yeah. So I got everything glued up in there now um, with those long ass screws. They're gonna get replaced with shorter screws, but I put glue on the framing and screwed it up so then that way I can just pull those screws out and put a different screw in.
All right, guys, bring you in for a minute, show you what we got. So I've got all the sides on, um, got that window framed, cut that window out, got it framed. And you'll see it when I put it up in there. Kind of went around, um, but you know, the roof material, it's gonna like come over the side, so it's gonna cover this up. I may put a little bit of filler in right here. I kind of misjudged the placement when I first put this on, but no worries. I mixed up some uh, wood shavings and some wood glue. And I made all this filler, so, you know, obviously there's gaps because, uh, you know, I'm not that good. So anyways, I uh, got this back door. So what I did is I did the poor man's fiberglass. Some people would take, like, a canvas drop cloth. And um, I looked at the prices of those, and then I looked around on Joann's, and I was able to get some 100% cotton fabric, which um, drop cloth canvas is 100% cotton so um i went and found this fabric i got the got enough to do the whole outside of the deal for 30 bucks it was like 28 dollars plus some tax so i was happy about that what i did is a, a layer behind with 100 percent glue i tried it with like 100 percent on my test i tried it with like 50 and then i tried it with like 70 glue 30 water and um definitely full strength on the tight bond too uh, worked the best so make sure you're using the type bond too because it's like a exterior glue and i don't know that's what all the people on on the ub tube are using so we'll see now i've seen some actual um pretty good results with this stuff and uh you know you think about like a gallon of resin can run you run you quite a bit like fiberglass resin but you know the uh gallon jug of glue is like 17 bucks and then the material is 28 so Hell yeah. With that that underlayment of glue plus the fabric plus glue on top, like this is going to be like super waterproof right here. So like I don't see how water is going to really affect it at all. And then especially with the exterior paint on it, you know, I'm not really seeing it. I did some little tiny test pieces and this was like my first big test and I've never done it before. But I'm hoping if I just take my time and sand it, I'll hit it with some 220 and then um, put some paint on it um, and just do a couple coats of paint and I think it'll come out all right. And then when we're all done, we'll throw some cool graphics on it and it'll be awesome. So that's it. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of as I'm going along, um, I'm not really recording myself going along. I'm just kind of like giving you updates as I go and showing you what I do. The big thing is gonna be inside. Um, I really wanna build some shelving and do some siding and I've already got, um a bunch of styrofoam panels now you can buy the kind at lowe's that actually have the, like the reflective backing on it um but we get a lot of shipments in at work and so these come like in like compartment doors and stuff like this like they come with this as the packaging and normally just gets thrown away and so i was like hell yeah i'll save some of that so i think i got enough to actually do the whole inside with that and then up underneath I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Probably just some reflectics or I don't do something up underneath, but, um, but yeah, if I can do all the walls with the foam, do some spray foam in the corners, I think it's going to be awesome. All right, guys, here we go. So I've been making some progress on this sucker. So I guess it uh, was a good time to start this since now we got this stupid uh, pandemic going on. So 
Uh, I'm still working currently, but uh, who knows when that'll change. But anyway, so um, yeah, I've been going along. I've pretty much got, so you can see, I got to do one more coat of paint. I put uh, like a base coat on. So basically how this worked was like a layer of glue, the fabric, two more layers of glue with sanding in between. Then I did one coat of paint. Um, it was like an exterior paint. So the cool thing is uh, the previous owner, he left all the paint that he did the house. So still pretty new, kind of newish paint. Um, but that stuff's expensive. So I figured I'd use it. And like I seen that I had a bunch of this color and I really liked it. So, um, and it is like a semi-gloss, so it's going to look pretty nice. Um, yeah, so I got to do one more coat. You can see some of it coming through there. All right, so I guess where I'm at is I've got the rubber roof on the rb rubber roof um i've got it trimmed out i got it taped now because i did some painting but the uh, trim you can see it here it's just trim i gotta put the uh there's like a rubber inset that goes in here but i'm gonna have to pick up some of that so it's all trimmed out the roof is glued the vent is in the this window's in here see the door i got the door up one thing i had to do on the door is I had it inset, but then I shimmed it out today, so I put an, a piece of 3 8 plywood behind it, and I uh, I glued it, clamped it, and then um, I ran a bead of um, liquid nail on top of it, kind of coated it with the liquid nail and everything, so then that way should be good. I don't know how waterproof it's going to be, but this whole thing is going to be covered and have a rain gutter, so it shouldn't really do it, and then there's going to be a bulb seal around there. Got this window in. Still got to trim the butyl tape. So there's butyl tape. Basically, there's butyl tape underneath this vent. It's going to get coated with um, a, a sealant called Dicor. And uh, I'll show you guys that when I put it on. And then the windows, they got butyl tape behind them, both of them. And so then that seals it up. So it uh, once this butyl tape gets on there and tight, no water's leaking in. All right, let's get on to the inside. Not a lot of progress on the inside. It took a lot of time to do the fabric and the sidewalls and to paint and to put all the glue and everything on it. I don't know. Was it worth it? Probably. I mean, it's waterproof. Um, I don't know. I guess time will tell, but it is waterproof. I'm not worried about like water leaking in or anything, but there's the windows. And so I'm moving along on the putting the styrofoam. Um, just basically, you know, trimming it up. Just takes a little bit of time. And then there's the vent. You can see there. A little crank. Just a little crank action. So it's pretty cool. Dig it. But yeah, the windows came out came out pretty good. So you can see the trim around the window there. Uh, this one here didn't have a trim, so I had to screw it through the sides, but I ended up pulling it in and then screwing it in the sides and it's working out. All right, guys, so this sucker's coming along, getting some more wall panels up in here, put a light in here. Probably all the wiring's gonna go to the front there once I figure out how I'm gonna do my cabinet, but I figured I'd show you the light. So, bang, and so you can, the one light lights it up pretty dang good. So I don't know how much more lighting I'm gonna need, but I might put one more. But damn, that's pretty bright. I had it hooked up to my drill, which is like 18 volt, 20 volts. So I'm, it's probably brighter than if I hooked it to 12 volt. But I think it's got a low setting and a high setting. Not quite sure. But anyways, yeah, I dig it. Oh, come along. All right, guys, what is going on? My garage is a big, fat mess, but uh, here is my, you can see how straight my lines are. Oh, yeah. Anyways, I made like a paper uh, diagram of the wall, um, and then I just traced it onto my side. I figured that'd be the easiest way instead of like cutting pieces and trying, you know what I mean? So, so that's what I did, and then coming onto the inside here. Oh, yeah, motion sensor light, baby. Uh. Anyways, got my... Uh... LED light, which is plenty of light for the whole thing. 
I might put one of these on the back door. So when I'm underneath there cooking or whatever, I can do that. And then uh, you can see there's still some gaps back there, but this is just going to be like the little storage area. So I don't, I, you know, the whole thing, I don't really care about. It can be kind of rough. It don't really matter to me. But anyways, that's the shelf. I'm going to put a little piece there to keep stuff from coming off. I don't even think I'm going to put a cabinet face or anything on it. Just leave it how it is. And then I got the bottoms all done up. So I'm going to get ready to do this side. And it's going to be awesome. All right, guys, what's going on? It's been a little bit, but got the sucker mounted up here. Use these um, these tie downs here, and uh, they're for like a big camper. But I had a problem with one of them; the end popped off. I don't know if it sheared that off or it wasn't wasn't crimped right. But anyway, so that's up in there, and uh, figured I'd give you a little look around. It's not trimmed out crazy. It. Uh, it uh you know you see that stuff down there and i don't really care like it's all insulated and i'm gonna sleep in here and it don't matter so i'll um i'll work on if i want to feel like trimming that out i will otherwise everything just works it's got a vent now i got a couple windows and i dig it and so i got my shelf up there so i'm de de debating whether i'm gonna put a lip on i'm probably gonna put like a little lip across the front so stuff doesn't fly out and then use these little baskets and uh, just put my stuff in, you know, like cooking stuff and little stuff you might want to have when you're camping and just kind of store it up there and maybe one of these to hold my spices and then that way I can grab it up there and bring it to the back when I'm cooking, set it there and do my cooking or set it out here and do my cooking and stuff like that. So the plans, so I'm gonna look for a couple more of these and get it all start getting it set up so we can go uh, go do some stuff all right guys I'm happy to announce that my first trip in the camper was a success. So I lost some of my decals. I didn't clean it real good before I put them on, but a lot of dirt road driving, probably like 60 miles on dirt. And it did well. This side held up good. These came loose initially and I tightened them down. And uh, what I did is I, I put a, a ripped down piece of two by four here that way I could fit or a two by three and then I could fit a full two by three in here. And so it fits tight and keeps it from moving side to side. I did have an issue with these. I think I hit a bump too hard. And uh, so they're not loose. It just, it bent the actual eye bolt. So it's, it's still solid in there. What I'm gonna do is take a piece of quarter inch uh, material with some lag, like three lag bolts and weld a, like a U-bolt or something to it. And, uh, but yeah, so it held up and uh, it was awesome to camp in. I should have, look at that, look at that sunset. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> but uh, it was great. The truck did good, aired down to about 20 pounds, 22 pounds, and um, did great off-road. Um, yeah, it did fine. Um, I only, and I was probably cruising too, about 20, 25, 30. Um, and some of the washboards, I went a little slower, but it did well. The only thing I was really worried about was the tires, because they're not all terrains and uh and the camper but once i fix the mounting it's gonna be awesome and i couldn't be happier so hell to the yeah and uh so a video will be coming out soon on my first trip so be on the lookout for that 